Welcome back everybody to the shop and the 14. So uh, last video I made we cut out these two lawn drones. Um, turned out pretty good. There's a couple of spots where the the dremel router kind of wiggled on me and ate into it, but it's all right. These things are uh, it's two layers of three millimeter Airx C7055. It's the yellow Airx. It's a little a little less dense and a little weaker than the green stuff we got in the shell. That's that's why uh, one of the reasons I went with the yellow stuff for these two parts is just because the skin has so much strength to it. You don't really need to to keep going <coughs> with it here. You could for a little bit of for a little bit of weight penalty, not a whole lot. You can just make the uh, the lightning holes a little bit larger. Um, all the bulkheads you see running width wise across the airplane are all finished birch aircraft ply. It's quarter inch, 12 ply, ply work. Yes, it's 12 ply, it's not three or five. It's not like your, it's not like your typical um, Baltic birch or the American birch plywood that you, you would see. Like uh, if you get aircraft ply from uh, your local hobby store, it's yeah, somewhere like five ply. This stuff's over double that, this is 12. And this stuff is, really dense, really hard, really strong stuff. It's it's not gonna go anywhere at all. So all the side to side bulkheads of this bur this finished 12 ply birch ply. There's four full width ones and then these two uh you know, we'll call them quarter bulkheads that basically all they are is they just help support the, the front of the, the servo and pivot stat stat pivot mechanism. So I've got a couple bolts here, kind of holding that they're just temporary for now. Waiting on two more servos to get here for horizontal staff. I'm actually going to set up the servo linkages for these with the matchboxes and everything before I close the fuselage. Just because it's going to be easier. Um, this is probably something I'm going to do for every, on every airplane that I sell. All the servos will be installed and the linkages will be preset. Everything will be loctited. So basically this whole system will be in. Uh, the servos will be centered, the arms will be on it, the linkages will be in, the match boxes for them will be here and set up and everything. So basically the horizontal stab mechanism will be plug and play. A little bit out of the, the norm for most things, but by doing the linkages in this back portion myself, I don't know they're exactly like they need to be. And no one can sit there and say, oh, the airplane crashed and then for whatever reason, oh, you didn't provide directions on how to do that. Well, I'm not going to provide directions on how to do it because I'm going I'm to do it. Anyways, I might do it. I don't know. It's more work to have to do and I might not even bother doing it. Now, another thing I'm going to do is the rubber grommets on the servos. I'm going to do away with all of those. I'm going to replace them with some machine aluminum grommets that I've got to draw the CAD and get uh, some quotes on. Basically, it'll just be a little aluminum two-step washer. Uh, the, the smaller step will fit where the, the rubber, the small part of the, oh, I guess the screw flange on the servo will fit down in there and then the, the two-step portion of it will overlap it and that'll actually be the, be a washer surface. And then it'll be for a 440 machine bolt. We'll just go through the middle, run through lock nuts on both sides or lock, lock nut on the one side and off you go. So with the aluminum washers, the aluminum grommets, whatever you want to call them, you basically get rid of any chance of slop in the horizontal stab, the rudder, any any system that you use it, it'll get rid of one more point of swap by getting rid of the rubber grommets. So we add, as you're looking at it right now, other than vacuuming this thing out and putting up some sawdust, all of these parts here are ready to glue in. It took, took long enough, constantly filling with stuff, but it's here, here we are, ready to go. Um, Said finished birch plywood for everything, Airx, fiberglass sandwich, six millimeter, these are two three millimeter plates. Uh, future ones will be the conti continuous six millimeter plate. Uh, I just didn't have any six millimeter stuff, so it was, this would just be, instead of two threes, it'll be a single six and then glass on both sides. Um, I'll probably end up starting using this stuff in some of the internal structure, the, the wings and the, the flaps and all too, because this stuff is, is really strong once you get it. Um, Everything in the wings that was balsa before will probably get replaced with this stuff in 10 millimeter thickness. 
the glass or unidirectional carbon on either side, just depending on what its purpose is going to be. And then all the ribs that were balsa wood and that were glass balsa are going to get replaced with three millimeter of the green stuff with a glass on either side. But um, I mean, as it sits right now, vacuum it out. We'll start slapping some uh, slapping some high saw in here. And y'all saw the, the monstrous high saw gun. So 200 milliliters, which I think is about 10 ounces, seven ounces of high saw. Hopefully that I've got two tubes of this stuff, so hopefully it'll it'll be enough to do the bottom of all this. Because the one thing y'all y'all can't see is right here, just in front of this portion of it, is the the carbon box bar. Well, all the bulkheads are under there too. They're in position. Um, the, the the landing gear plates, which let me uh, okay, let me just take the camera off the tripod and I'll show you guys that stuff. Turbine rails, landing gear plates, all that stuff's already in there. So as you can see, this is the one bulkhead on the back side of the landing gear mount. Box bar, box bar support bulkhead. Another support bulkhead and the inlet ducts, they're there. I gotta glue those in place, but I can't do that until all of this is in place. Um, turbine rails are here. They're elevated a little higher, I believe. It's, it's really hard to tell looking as it is now. I can't, my head's too big to fit down in a tunnel. But um, I think they're a little bit elevated. So if they are, what I'll end up doing is I'll just uh, make another pair of plates. They'll come down and drop the bolt or glue to the bottom side of them. Landing gear plate goes all the way from here, and you can see where it stops up there at the forward uh, box bar bulkhead. And again, all this stuff is kind of interlocking. This was carried over and dropped down, but I think my landing gear plate's out about a quarter of an inch, quarter of three eighths of an inch too far. So right now I've just got this set up to where this is just used as a, a positioning jig to get this bulkhead, that bulkhead, and the forward spar bulkhead all lined up. And then when I get the landing gear, this can be removed and adjusted either way. I do have some lightning holes here. So on this one, I might end up having to put doublers on both sides and move the plate in. But that's a prototype for you. There's always these little things that you gotta work out. If I was patient to wait for the landing gear, I could get this stuff all done, but all these plywood pieces is 150 bucks in plywood. So this, just what you see here is 150 bucks, not including the foam pieces or the, the Airx sandwich plates. So $150 in materials just for that, not including machine parts. Probably 500 bucks right there you're looking at. <laughs> Depressing, isn't it? So anyways, I'm going to vacuum this thing out and then we'll get that high saw gun out and we'll start gluing some stuff in here. Um, but meanwhile, I got like six videos that I've been making over the past week and a half. I'm going to put those on there before I do any of this. So we'll see you guys and gals back here in a moment. See ya.